Sweet and Petey. Welcome to another episode of Eric Way Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm going to do a review of the Glenglassa Torfa Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This is a richly peated Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. The word Torfa in Norse language means peat. It's made from 100% malted barley. It is lightly peated at 20 ppm. It has a non a statement. It's aged in experiment cast and I'll address this in a second. Potentially X sherry cast. It is non chill filtered, has natural color. It's bottled at 50% alcohol by volume and sells for anywhere between $57 and $65 in my neighborhood. And that's for a 750 milliliter. Sometimes I forget that some of my viewers aren't buying 750s, you're buying 700s over in the UK, over in Europe. So, one of the interesting things or challenging things about doing, you know, trying to get notes for doing reviews is a lot of times distilleries don't provide enough information. For example, look at the Glen Glass website. It doesn't say diddly regarding PPMs or the cask or anything like that. So then you have to go to secondary sources, perhaps blogs, perhaps uh, other websites, other videos, whatever else. And sometimes that information can be actually conflicting. So if you look at the Whiskey Exchange, website, it states it's only aged uh, in X bourbon cast. And a lot of other blogs, a lot of other channels and so forth said the exact same thing. So you think, okay, consensus out there in the general public, this is only aged in X bourbon cast. However, I found a video with the master blender and this is what she says. And Torfa to me is the ultimate fusion of uh, land and sea. It brings together the uh, peat from northern Aberdeenshire with a lush and coastal sweet spirit. It's matured in both sherry and in bourbon casks. So really when it comes down to it, what we really care about in terms of aromas and flavors is, if it is, you know, aged a little bit in a sherry cask as well as a bourbon cask, can you tell it from the nose? And that's another really interesting thing about this whiskey. From the neck pour, Mostly what I was getting is just sort of a saccharine sweetness. It was sweet, 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 sweet. And if you ever have, you know, those artificial sweeteners, saccharine, uh, you know, in the little, come little perhaps yellow or pink little packets, maybe put them in your, your iced tea or your coffee or something. And if you tasted it straight, well, it's sweet up front, you get that little weird saccharine bitterness on the back end. I was getting that from this whiskey. But this is a whiskey that has a huge evolution. So if you watch any videos on YouTube and they're just pouring straight from the neck and giving their perception of the whiskey straight from the neck, my personal opinion is, is uh, forget whatever it is they have to say. You gotta spend some time with this. It definitely opens up. The amount that this whiskey opens up as you get past the uh, out of the neck, into the shoulder and beyond, is huge. It has a huge arc in the amount that it changes, especially in terms of getting more balance between the sweetness and fruit character and the peat, and that sort of saccharine bitterness starts to go away, but the peat also becomes more uh, prominent. From the neck pour, I couldn't even get any peat on it, and even on the palate, it was questionable as to how much peat was in it, but now it is a completely different thing now that I've gotten it past the shoulders. So on the nose, it still smells really, really, really sweet. I still get little, you know, kind of like powdered um, sugar on it. If you have some sort of pastry or some sort of treat or even dried fruit and they dust it with, uh, pow uh, you know, powdered sugar and you can kind of get a whiff of the powdered sugar apart from whatever the treat you was you're eating, uh, you get that on this. But then I also get some butterscotch a little bit of like apple pie with a little bit of powdered sugar on it. And then the peat kicks in. It's not real intense, it's not in your face, but I do get a whiff of smoke on the palate. I get a little bit of pear, dried pineapple, loads of vanilla, and a little bit of a floral note. I don't get flowers very often on a whiskey, but I'm getting a little bit of a floral note on the back end as well. On the palate. 
it is very, 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 very sweet. But once it has some time to open up and the peat comes out, I think the peat and the smoke sort of help counterbalance the, this overly sweetness that sort of, you know, that makes your fillings and your teeth hurt. It's that sweet, you know, it's kind of like, damn, that is sweet. But once the smoke and the peat and those characteristics start coming out, as well as what I think are actually just a hint, just a hint of a sherry cast note. So even if I was tasting this blind, there is still something, uh, it's not real intense. It's not your typical, you know, Glendronic, uh, Macallan, you know, Aberlauer and, and so forth. Is that a sherry cast? It's not like that at all. But it does seem to be just a hint of a dried black fruit note. It, but it is very, very, very subtle. But what I like is the smoke and the peat are really coming to the surface and really balancing and counterbalancing uh, with the fruit and sweetness characters. So you start getting something a little drier, a little more savory. Now, it's a non age statement, right? There's a lot of things I like about this whiskey. non chill filtered, no added coloring, 50% ABV. That's a very respectable ABV. I like that. I think the price range actually is uh, fairly decent on this. But it's a non a statement and tasting blind, I'd have to guess, it's probably somewhere between three and five years. It definitely is not showing like any serious time in cask. However, the youth on the whiskey and the freshness of the, of the flavors on it and the, and the floral component, I, I'm kind of getting now, I'm kind of getting a uh, smoky flower <laughs> on the back end, as well as sweetness, I think. I think it's covered really well. I covered really, really well. Um, my perception of the whiskey, starting from here down here, has radically, radically changed. It took me a few days to get there. It took me a few drams to get there. But I'm starting to really, really like it. From the neck pour, I probably would have gone like an 82 because it was so simple. Uh, but now, getting down be below the shoulder, I'm going to go 87 points. 87 points. I think it's a really good dram. I think it's very affordable. I... Would like to see an age statement and the youth part uh, straight up i i would like to see more time on it i think it does need more maturation time but given as it is i still think it's a very 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 good whiskey uh at a halfway decent price uh and i'm really 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 happy because i was i mean t seriously i was bummed disappointed i don't like giving bad reviews i really don't want i don't like doing that but the fact that the smoke and the peat is coming out a lot more, I really like that. However, having said that, also, on the finish, the youth says, hello, I'm here. Now, if you haven't already, I highly, 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 highly recommend, if you can, particularly if you're, if you're over there in Scotland, if you're over in the UK, and you can get access to it, I highly recommend buying a bottle of New Make Spirit. From, just buy any distillery from Scotland that you can. So here's two uh, that I have. This is one that I picked from Annandale Distillery in, in the Lowlands. Uh, they call this a rascally liquor, and this is peated. This is another one. This is from Lag Distillery on the Isle of Arran. This one's also peated. So I would recommend getting one that's non-peated, one that's peated, and if you're into bourbons, uh, get one of um, a White Dog or a New Make. I have one of those as well. This is a Maker's White that I picked up from uh, Maker's Mark Distillery. So this is a bourbon without it being aged, essentially, so it's the spirit that goes into making a bourbon. And what you can do with these uh, new makes or white dogs is you can sort of calibrate your palate to say, okay, this is what youth like. This is what a young spirit is like. And then if you can find a uh, young spirit, a young whiskey, say the Ardbeg Wee Beastie that has an ace daemon on it at five years old, really, really glad they've got that on there. Then you can kind of sort of calibrate your palate to detect what are the typical characteristics that you get from a young spirit. Uh, I wish more younger whiskeys, producers, would get rid of the non age statement and at least put three, four, five. Three is the minimum required by law for Scotch whiskeys. So then the consumers go, okay, I like that, or maybe people don't like that, um, and but that's what it, it is like at this age. Then when you are trying whiskeys that don't have an age statement and you kind of got your brain calibrated as to what they're like, you'll begin to pick up, hey, this is showing 
are uh, some notes, some typical notes of a young whiskey. So what is a young spirit like? It depends. Sometimes it can come across as like a green apple note. Sometimes it comes across more as a melon note. What I find typically is that youth shows up in the mid palate. Maybe not so much on the front, maybe not so much on the, on the finish. For me personally, I find that young spirits show up right in the middle, probably because that's when you have the most amount in your mouth. It's not, you know, just entering, it's not, you know, dissipating, but it's sort of solidly in your mouth. And this definitely has it. Now, whether that's favorable or not, it can depend on your palate. What I like about this whiskey is the richness of the casks, the richness of uh, the peat, you know, the, and the um, savory notes of the peat, uh, it's almost, you might say makeup, you know, it sort of covers up uh, the youth. I would prefer to say it's not so much as like, you know, you're putting makeup to, you know, make it look pretty but I think it does sort of counterbalance the youthful notes. So there's something a lot more interesting that you don't feel like you're drinking a new make whiskey. So, alrighty, would I recommend this for the average consumer? It's really, 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 really gonna depend on you. I think this is one of those whiskeys in which I like it once I got to a particular uh, part in it, you know, once I got below the shoulder, but it's really gonna depend on you. So don't go by just what I say in terms of score, go by in terms of the characteristics and how I've described this whiskey as to whether or not you think this whiskey is right for you. Alrighty, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them down below and I might just answer them uh, live during the live stream. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel and yet you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe, ring the bell to be notified. And I wanna thank my um, Patreons for supporting this work. All right, until next time, cheers.